Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this scene of Cookmere Haven Beach um, in East Sussex from a photograph or some photographs and sketches that I took and made um, the other week, my first trip out uh, since the easing of some of the lockdown regulations. I'm using Milford um, cold pressed 140 pound paper. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees. And today I'm going to be trying out these new brushes. Um, the new Chinese Haki brushes that I bought from um, the website AliExpress. First of all, I'm going to pencil in a fairly low horizon, about a third of the way up the page. And then I'm going to bring across um, a water line so that I can see where my beach will be and where my sea will be. I want to keep it nice and simple, just with a few posts of this breakwater in it. Um, the actual beach itself has um, longer breakwaters, but I want to keep it nice and, and simple. I want this to be a sky painting um, more than in anything. Keep, that will really give me the chance to try these brushes out. So using the largest brush, and there are three sizes of them, um, small, medium and large, I shall wet the page all over, making sure it's nice and wet. And then I'm going to dip into my cobalt blue. And just try out these brushes. A bit more paint, so it's a slightly richer colour. I want to try and create a sky that's mostly white um, fluffy clouds, large clouds um, against a background of a bit of blue sky. So I'm going to leave quite a lot of the paper unpainted at this stage. Now I'm taking the small Harky brush and this is a very weak mixture of raw sienna and burnt sienna and it's, as you can see, as I'm dabbing it into the wet paint, it's picking up some of the cobalt blue. Um, so I'm having a nice sort of raw sienna and burnt sienna colour. And where it's picking up the blue, I'm getting a nice pale grey, which I'm hoping will give me my cloud shadows without me having to actually paint them in and therefore keep a nice light touch to the painting. I'm now just moving the paint around that's already on the page. I don't want to do too much more to it. Just a little bit of blue across the horizon, I think. It should all soften back and diffuse nicely um, using this wet in wet technique. Just moving the paint that's on the page around very delicately with the tips of this brush. And that's the sky just about done. So I'm going to move down to the horizon line and bring across um, some water, the distant sea and the beach. Just going to run it along the horizon line and then bring that paint further down um, I'm following my lines that I've drawn in to try and keep to that sort of rough, um, rough shape and pattern. I'm liking the brushes so far. I think they're goat hair and bamboo. I'm not too sure. Um, And while it's all still wet, I'm going to continue painting wet in wet and bring in the sort of basic beach. Um, I mean, that's the base for my water um, and the water that comes up into the foreground, uh, the rock pools, etc. And now I'm going to put in um, the raw sienna and burnt sienna mix to start establishing where the stones will go. And next I'm going to put in some darks and this is ivory black 
burnt umber and I'm going to dot it around the foreground sort of in using the tips of the brush mostly or the corners keeping a sort of horizontal orientation to my sort of brush marks to start building up the look of the beach. Adding a bit of, um, I think it's the burnt sienna and maybe the raw sienna to soften or warm that colour up a bit and a bit more water and building up the distant beach. Everything's softly diffusing as you can see because it's all still, the paper is wet and so the paint is um, it's just blending into other parts of the paint and diffusing into the paper to give me some nice soft transitions. And where I've added a stronger, drier mixture of burnt sienna and burnt umber, I'm getting the marks are staying on the page more strongly and I'm getting a richer sort of coloration as the basis for my foreground. I'm going to keep working across my beach with those colours. Um, I think it's yeah, ivory black, burnt sienna, raw sienna um, and burnt umber. Trying to build up the textures of the beach. I'm trying to keep my paint much lighter in the distance so I get a sense of recession um, because it's low tide and the water line is quite a long way into the distance so eventually I want to get that feeling of distance. At the moment I'm focusing more on the foreground and building up texture and tone. Just like with my other Harky brushes these ones come to a nice chisel edge so I can get some very fine lines. I can use the corners and the chisel edge to create some really nice marks. I want to keep enough unpainted paper in the foreground for the rock pools so I'm being mindful to paint around them. A bit more of that nice rich um, burnt sienna and that's really, um, really showing up nicely against the brown of the beach. I've mixed up now some quite sort of inky consistency ivory black and burnt umber and I'm just flicking it from a bristle brush into the foreground where the paint and paper is still wet to add even more texture and some darks to the front or the foreground. Again, taking care to avoid my rock pool areas. You can see that most of the time I'm tapping the brush, that's giving me larger drops. And when I'm flicking the brush, but carefully across the bottom of the painting, um, I'm getting a smaller spray of droplets. So that's my first layer finished. I'm going to leave it to dry, but first I'll just clean across the bottom tape in case there's any sort of water there so I don't get back runs. So I'm going to leave it to dry completely and come back. It's now completely dry and it's dried back really nicely, a bit paler um, than when I painted it, uh, which is always what happens with watercolour. So you always need to paint a little bit darker than you expect. I want to define my horizon. So using a ruler and just a damp, clean brush, a flat brush, I've run, run that along the horizon line. And now I'm just going to use a piece of tissue after waiting a few seconds and just sweep that off and I've been left with a little bit more definition there for my horizon line. And the next thing I want to do is have my 
sky, the bluest part of my sky, reflecting in my rock pools. So I'm mixing up um, a medium, pale to medium mixture of my cobalt blue on my small hockey brush. I'm going to brush that across using horizontal brush strokes into my rock pools. I'm trying to just hit the area mainly that's below that large blue patch of sky in the middle. For me, this is one of the important, most important parts of the painting because it's what I remember most about the beach on that day was how beautiful the reflections of the sky were. I'm going to bring across some pale blue across towards the right hand side over the water there, but not too much, just trying to keep it very subtle. I can put in a bit more later if I want to, but at the moment I'm just keeping it very, very pale. Now I'm mixing up my sort of uh, mid-brown, which is all three of my earth colours all together, but quite a watery mixture, adding an extra layer in the background uh, just to add some shadow, maybe cloud shadow, across the beach in the distance. And apart from a few minor tweaks, I think that will do for now. Um, the next thing I want to do is um, think about getting in my breakwater posts and when they're in then I can focus on putting in some some more foreground rocks into the beach and maybe building up those blue reflections a bit more if I think it needs it. Now that it's dry I've started drawing in two large jetty or breakwater posts and one smaller one towards the left. These will be my focal point. So I'm penciling them in first um, and then using my flat brush and a mixture of um, ivory black, cobalt blue and burnt, uh, sorry, burnt umber um, just to carefully paint in my uh, posts. or pilings, whatever they're called. I'm trying to keep some variety of texture in them by using the brush strokes slightly randomly and sort of building up a pattern within each post, if you see what I mean. These should blend together, but it should just give me the idea of sort of weathered wood, hopefully. And that's the last one going in, much shorter than the other two. I think that helps to balance the composition up. Now, once I'm happy with them, I'll move on still using the flat brush and still using the same colours, but mostly ivory black and burnt sienna, sorry, burnt umber. I'm going to build up some nice dark but simple foreground rocks. I don't want to draw attention to these too much. I mean, I obviously want them to look okay, but for me, the most important thing in this painting is the sky. So I'm just really setting the scene um, 
to show off that sky. I'm keeping my shapes for my rocks curved at the top, flat across the bottom where they meet the beach. And that sort of helps to suggest the stones and rocks on the beach. If you wanted to, you could build up fairly thick layers of paint in your rocks and then use the corner of a plastic card or a palette knife to etch into the, the paper and help to create the rock shapes. But I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to just paint them in uh, with the brush to keep them looking nice and soft and not too defined. As I say, the important part for me in this painting is the sky and of course the posts and or poles which kind of lead the eye up to the sky anyway. I'm adding a bit of shadow coming in across from the left and across the base and that again helps to work as a framing device for the centre of the painting. Just keeping the edges nice and sort of soft and blurry. And now I'm taking my small calligraphy brush and the same mixture that, that I used to paint the poles or pilings and I'm going to paint their reflections just using some short horizontal lines, fairly random, but just running them down into that rock pool, bringing them down vertically underneath where, um, where, the, where the poles are. And I think that will just about do. I'm just going to dab off with a tissue a tiny bit of paint just to, again, add more variety. I can put a bit more dark back in there again if I want to a bit later. And just a few marks underneath that shorter pile, piling as it's in the rocks and there's not so much water around it so it doesn't have reflections as much. Maybe just pull out a few darks and details here and there. And I'll come back and finish that part later. now using some pale grey mixed from you know, the colours on my palette. Um, quite a pale mix. I'm carefully putting in some horizontal lines to suggest uh, the waves coming in on the beach on that side. And then I'll put some shadows into the beach, into the distance on the other side. And now I shall leave all that to dry and come back and finish the painting once it's dry. It's all nice and dry so I'm mixing up more of that lovely cobalt blue and using my small squirrel mop I shall start to try and build up across the beach hints and suggestions of rock pools and water and wet rocks and darken up the blue in the pool uh, where the poles are standing.
wait until everything's completely dry before you do this and be quite gentle because you don't want to lift up the rocks underneath just literally glazing over with the cobalt blue onto the very dry painting it has to be bone dry I think I'm happy with that. Um, maybe a little bit more across there. Yes, that's what I was looking for. And now finally, I'm putting a little bit of rope, like the remains of some rope uh, tied around one of these poles and I'm just going to have the rope hanging down into the wet beach, onto the wet beach using my small calligraphy brush. And I'll just add in just some slightly darker marks at the base of the poles where they meet the beach and the reflections. And I think I'm happy with that. I think I'm going to leave it there. You could, of course, as always, put some seagulls in. They would look quite nice. But I like how sort of empty and bare the sky is. Um, I find that quite appealing. So now I'm going to remove the tape and see how it looks with its nice clean white border. That helps you to see it with fresh eyes. And that will help me to see whether it needs anything else doing to it. And I think I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that. I think it's, it's turned out more or less how I wanted it to. I'm very pleased with the sky. I'm pleased with the way the brushes worked for the sky and the beach. Um, the detail was put in with flat brushes and the calligraphy brush, but the Harky brushes did a really good job. Um, I think you can see when we look close up um, how nice and clean those soft washes are. And I'm very happy with the granulation of the blue in the sky. I think it looks really pretty. Thanks so much for watching. Um, if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel and I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.